Oh, hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in today's session, we are going to discuss about the simplest road to crack GPAD series part 9, which will encompass pharmaceutical analysis. And today we will be discussing about the different um, things that are to be prioritized for your pharmaceutical analysis. So firstly, you need to have a basic knowledge of your SIM 7 because that is exactly the point where after two to three months your GPAD is conducted. So in SEM 7 you are having spectroscopies like UV and IR. Now according to the PCI syllabus NMR and mass is not included in the syllabus. It is an elective subject in SEM 8. So if you if your college doesn't select that as an elective subject you need to study it separately on your own either from YouTube channels or from the books. So you but these spectroscopy are important because from NMR from mass there are questions that appear either on coupling constant or on the graph or on the fragmentation or on the ionization or on the detectors on the source. So you need to know that speaking about UV and IRs questions come upon like vibra uh, the principle which one is electronic transition which one is based upon dipole moment the Hooke's law and Beer Lambert's law the vibrations bending stretching. The peak values are like uh, for NH2, what is the peak value for OH, what is the peak value. In UV, cutoff wavelength is important. Then the shifts, bathochromic shift, hypsochromic shift, that is also very essential. You cannot miss that. So these are important things. In NMR, McLafferty's rearrangement is very important. Uh, and along with that, you need to know the Pascal's triangle as well. That is also uh, sometimes asked. And HDI, which is double bond equivalence hydrogen deficiency index. On this formula, there is a lot of things that are there are a lot of things that are asked. So see to it that you do those concepts well. Next up, we have atomic absorption and atomic emission ka difference. So one is a spectroscopy that shows dark lines and obeys beer Lambert's law, while the other one shows colored lines and does not obey beer Lambert's law. So you need to know that in which uh, aspect in which spectroscopy there is absorption, which one there is excitation, which is the emission spectroscopy, which is the absorption spectroscopy. Flurimetry, you need to know the quenching. So quenching agents are very important and the factors affecting fluorescence. Also the difference between phosphorescence and fluorescence. In phosphorescence there is triplet state involved. From tri the transition is from triplet to singlet. While in uh, flurry while in normal flurry the also the lifespan is less and the wavelength is also less. And the transition is from singlet excited to singlet ground state. Next up that you need to prioritize is chromatography techniques. Adsorption and partition is okay. So the formula for RF value resolution, all those things is fine. But HPLC and GC, these are the favorite question of examiner. So see to it that you cover entire HPLC and GC. Whether it be the columns, whether it be the analytical and pre-column, the detectors involved, bulk property, solute property, the temperature programming, the concept of uh, uh, isocritic and gradient illusion normal phase and reverse phase chromatography techniques. So in chromatography or pumps, the different reciprocating pumps, the injecting system uh, uh, that is riodine injector in HPLC and split and split as injector in GC. Next up we have is titrations. So titrations may we have precipitation, complexometry, acid base and redox and also non aqueous titration. But that is uh, we, go, we are going to discuss it in a separate point. So these are four basic titration that you need to know, especially the indicators, the pH and the color change. Suppose phenolphthalein, it is acid base indicator and in alkaline pH it is, it is uh, pink like in around 8 to 0.3 to 11. So you need to know that precipitation made the difference between Mohar, Vollard, Fezans and Galeusac, which one is adsorption indicators, the example of dyes. The which one is turbidity indicator, the difference between Mohar and Volard, which one takes place in an acidic condition, which one is a direct and which one is an indirect. Complexometry may masking and demasking agents play a very vital role. Acid base may those curves, so sigma curve, then there is one curve which is uh, like uh, steep, one verge which is upward steep. So those curves you need to know like strong acid, strong base curve, which is the curve because those curves have been asked in examinations. The next up we have is polarography, conductometry and potentiometry. So in polarography you need to know the Alcovix equation because that is asked quite often and uh, the difference between the dropping mercury electrode and the rotating platinum electrode. So which one is a micro, which one is polarizable, which one is a cathode, you need to know that in polarography, just the basics. And the types of current, diffusion, residual, migration, limiting, 
so that and the concept of half wave potential these are the only things to be done from polarography conductometry may you need to again the graphs strong acid strong base and all and in potentiometry the equation the principle and the electrodes used like the primary reference electrode the secondary reference electrode the indicator electrode when do you use glass electrode when do you use silver silver chloride and calomel electrode so that is important and the next one is few miscellaneous uh, techniques um, colometry amperometry differential scanning colorimetry thermogravimetry analysis differential thermogravimetry analysis so these are techniques that are used for uh, measuring hygroscopicity for measuring polymorphism because there are endothermic peaks that are obtained from these technology uh, from these techniques so these are uh, not that important but sometimes one or two questions may be asked so if not if you have not done this it's okay you can leave it next up we have is errors accuracy precision and significant numbers so that i uh, just uh, have a brief idea about what the types of errors and how to minimize them like learning a blank determination what is a blank determination running a control determination what is that control determination accuracy so difference between accuracy and precision so one is the closeness of the measurement and one is the difference difference between the true value and the measured value so that is important and significant figures you need to know that uh, if i am writing a number as 0.002 so how many significant figures if i am writing the number as 200 so 200 only has one significant figure which is 2 but if i write the same number as 2.00 so it will have three significant uh, figures so you need to know the basic rules of significant figures because those are the important and those are the ones that actually count uh, the next one we have is nephelo turbidometry so in nephelo turbidometry basically you not need to know the difference between the nephelometry and turbidometry because that difference is asked which one is scattered which one is transmitted which one is at 90 which one is at 180 and certain miscellaneous chromatography as i mentioned previously gel affinity ion exchange the principle the types of ion exchange strong weak uh, which one is cationic which one is anionic so you need to know the uh, also the cross linker used the polystyrene and divinyl benzene etc the next one we have is gravimetry so in gravimetry you measure the amount it can be either volumetric or precipitation gravimetry it can be of two types so you measure the amount or you let the substance get volatilized so that is important and non aqueous titration you need to know the solvents so you have protic solvents you have aprotic solvents you have amphiprotic solvents you have uh, protogenic protophilic etc so you need to know the examples of those solvents and the concept of leveling effect that is important from non aqueous so uh, dividing these into three phases the first phase will be the phase of spectroscopy and chromatography the second phase will be the phase of uh, all the titrations that are for to be performed and the third phase will be of the miscellaneous categories that are left like errors nephelometry and all so keep this i hope this helps you this video helps you all do let me know if you all want any other video on any other topic or if you all want me to teach something it would be my pleasure to help you all thank you so much for watching the video